Hey, it's Pastor Mike. Before we get started with today's episode, I want to encourage you to check out our other Time of Grace podcasts, like this one, The Non-Microwave Truth by C.L. Whiteside. C.L. just has an amazing way to bring fresh perspective to some of my favorite passages from the Bible. You can search for The Non-Microwave Truth wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. And now on to today's episode. This week, we have the joy of reading through the book of Ephesians together. And how rich are the words that the Apostle Paul writes for us to know all the blessings that come to us in Christ. A focus of his letter to the Ephesians and our thoughts for this week. Now today we're going to think about Ephesians chapter 3 and more of the blessings that are ours in Christ. Paul starts out this chapter talking about a mystery. Now you can think about some of the great mysteries of this world, maybe crimes that have gone unsolved, or maybe you can think about scientific mysteries, like how does it work that all the the planets move in their orbit and don't crash into each other? Only God knows how he made that work so specially and so perfectly. I maybe think of the mystery of how my wife could love such a bum like me. (laughs) There are all these mysteries, but maybe the greatest of all is what Paul talks about here in Ephesians 3. And as he writes about God's wisdom in all the world, he gets to this main thought. The mystery is that the Gentiles, the non-Jews, have been included in God's grace. Now remember some of the history there where God called his people specifically from the line of Abraham and said, you are going to be my people. And then later on it was Jacob who became Israel and the Israelites came from that and the Savior came from the Israelite Jewish people. Well, here's a mystery for us to learn and appreciate and enjoy down to the depths of our heart. God has revealed this mystery that his love, his grace, our Savior Jesus Christ is not just for the Jews, for the Israelites. It's for all people. That includes me a Gentile. And so Paul writes about this manifold wisdom of God that Jesus would live and die and rise again for all people. And then Paul writes about this special privilege that he had, that that he could share that good news that Jesus is for the Gentiles too. And he has a, a strange little phrase that he writes in there. He calls himself the least of all God's people. And maybe you might think to yourself, well, (laughs) what do you mean, Paul, the least of God's people? I mean, you are possibly one of the greatest apostles of all time. How could you be the least or, or the worst? But don't forget Paul's backstory, that he used to be known as Saul. Saul, who was a part of persecuting and seeking out and imprisoning, even murdering Christians. And yet God's grace came to him and the forgiveness and the love that are his through Jesus. And he turned his life around by God's grace and now he's going out and preaching that grace to others. And so that's why he calls himself the least of God's people with the greatest privilege of all to go and tell others the good news that Jesus is their savior too. That's what we enjoy, the goodness of God's grace. And so as we read through this chapter, we think about this goodness of God that that comes to all people. And then we think about how God uses that in each of our lives. And so Paul writes this very personal and thoughtful prayer on how he wants the Ephesians to continue to grow in this mystery of God's grace, to grow and become rooted and established in God's love and to flourish in their lives of love for God and their love for one another. And so as Paul wraps up this chapter and thinks about the immeasurable goodness of God's love, he has this sort of doxology, which means like a a word or a phrase of praise to conclude the chapter. He says in one of the lines, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we can ask or imagine. I have to tell you, those words are, are very personal to me. When I was a pastor previously at at a church, it was a mission church. We started with almost nothing, with just a few people. And I used these words at a devotion for a dedication of a new building. And it wasn't our first building project or our second or our third. It was the fourth building project in less than a decade. Our, Our school, our church had been growing and flourishing. 
And I thought back to the days when we were just sitting around in the living room with a handful of people and I had no idea what to do and they had no idea what to do. We barely even had a church name at that point. And then you fast forward less than a decade, about eight or nine years, and God had showered all these blessings on us, more than we could ask or even imagine. This is the goodness of God. And as you read through chapter 3, I want you to reflect on that. Not only on how God has opened up and revealed this mystery to you, that you, you are included in God's grace, but, but also think about the other things that come to you through Christ. The connection to other people, the peace that you have every day knowing that God is with you, the hope that you have of everlasting life, the, the comfort knowing that every sin of yours is forgiven every day in Jesus. It's so true, God can and does do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. And of course, this awesome fact underscores and underlies it all. It's all ours in Christ. That's Ephesians chapter 3. Dig into it, meditate on it, read it today, and come back again tomorrow as we think more about how God's grace belongs to us in Christ as we learn it from the book of Ephesians.